Look at the difference in size, like this heat sink is twice the size. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Daniel here with my new Tarantula Pro from Amherst. If you did not see my previous video, I just want to say in 10 seconds, I'm having problems, print interruptions typically after two hours, so I cannot do long prints, or I get layer shifts. So it's either mechanical, right? Mechanical or electrical. I think I have eliminated uh, mechanical because if you were here and you could test my setup here, measure distances, I was very careful, like you probably saw in my assembly video when I assembled this uh, printer. So I don't think the problem is mechanical. I think it's electrical. And I got many comments from my previous video again showing my problem. And um, some say power supply, others say control board. So if you look at the uh, assembly here, I took apart from the, uh, the printer. Looking at the options here, I saw a couple of power supplies on the, uh, on the web, but better power supplies are always a bit longer. And as you can see here, there is no space. So I would have to cut this orange casing uh, to fit the power supply and they're around like forty fifty dollars Or I could change the control board and as you can see here I don't think the problem is the control board. It could be the stepper drivers and I took I took one out here This is the stock that comes with the the printer and I'm just going to show you here So this is the stock that comes with the printer. So I found for $40 Canadian or 30 US on Amazon.com this set here and let me open the box I'm going to show you it's from BZ3D and look at that this is what you get it's not expensive and I bought this set not because of the name of raw reputation like I did a lot of searches I could not find anything it's just because in the video description uh, sorry in the product description it says compatible with mks sgen lv 1.0 that's exactly what the product description says on amazon and this is the board that comes anyway with my printer and i think that some guys got a different board in their tarantula pro or tarantula rs so you have to check your version so just looking at the heat sink first of all Look at them side by side. Look at the difference in size. Like this heat sink is twice the size in area of the stock one. So I'm going to uh, install that. And uh, before I do that, actually, I'm going to take one out of the styrofoam because I want to show something here. You would think that when you install the replacement, and look at that, you would think that you would insert the new one in the same orientation with the screw as you can see here being on that side but no if you look at the pin description this has to be installed this way it is the opposite so the ground and the signals are opposite if you look at them carefully so be careful that you put the chips in the right orientation so i'm going to install them and um We'll see uh, what happens. So I removed the two stepper drivers over here. I kept the old one here, and this is the new one. To show the orientation of the adjustment screw for VRF, as you can see, it's on the right side. It, here it's on the left side. So you have to be careful, depending on the set that you buy, that you are installing them the right way. All the stepper drivers are removed. Now we need to remove the third jumper right here for each location. As you can see, I installed the four stepper drivers and three uh, heat sinks. Be uh, careful here that you leave uh, enough clearance to be able to turn the screw to adjust the VRF again in between the heat sinks. So I installed the four stepper drivers over here. So let's turn the power on without motors connected. It's safer uh, because we don't know about the VRF at the moment. So let's turn this on and hopefully we won't see any fireworks. Nope, everything seems to be normal. The LED is on here, the fan is working, and like I said, the motors are not connected. So now let's adjust the VRF to 0.95 volts using our multimeter. 
I'm not measuring VRF by putting the probe on the screw itself and getting the ground on the uh, on the casing here. And as you can see, I'm at 0.69 volts. I need to increase that. So turning the screw just a little bit more and checking again. And I am at 0.977. I turned a little bit too much. The recommended voltage by Amers is 0.95 volts. So now if I check again, I am at 0.953. So this is good for the second stepper driver. Now we have our four stepper drivers installed with VRF adjusted to 0.95 volt as per Amers. So I'm going to reconnect all the uh, cables uh, with the uh, motors and uh, limit switches and uh, I'll be back in a minute. I think I was a little too optimistic. I changed hardware and I did not do a firmware update but I was still hoping and guess what it's not working I do get the screen over here but the axes are not uh, moving so I have my laptop and a cable provided by Amers and I'm going to do a firmware update uh, we'll see how that goes because I did some research before doing this and uh, if you go on the table website the files are not there anymore uh, the files that you can find are two years old for different models uh, there are one or two videos where they show firmware update on the previous model, not this one. So uh, I took the model number of the, uh, of the control board. I tried to find something equivalent. I'm going to show you the process of going through Arduino, uh, the editing software, to edit a firmware file. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Go to the tab called configuration.h. In the Arduino software, you need to find these lines here and remove the common, the two slashes at the beginning, and change the default A4988 for TMC2208 standalone for all three axes, and then we will change it also for the extruder, E0. Next, you need to find these lines here to invert the X and Y direction. We need to change X from false to true and Y from true to false like so for the extruder you leave the setting to false finally we click on upload and we wait for the firmware to be uh, downloaded onto the printer after trying for two days it is not working i could not find a decent firmware file so what you saw is the tornado firmware file which is a different printer and all that because the SD card I got with my printer is corrupted and apparently there's a firmware file on this SD card but I don't have access to it and I sent an email to uh, Hummer's support and in one week no uh, no reply so not working um, this I'm doing this video because for two reasons first I may help you here because the quality of these separate drivers although I could not test them in operation but the, the build quality is great for the price firmware update maybe you can help me maybe you found a file the Hummers website has no firmware file that that I don't understand how can you sell 3d printers have a website and you do not have firmware files on your website maybe i missed it but anyway i checked twice so i don't know so guys if uh, if you find something and um, i know that many of you have a working printer because i see it in my comments but my printer from the actually it was working fine at the beginning but when i started to do long prints then i got uh, print interruptions as you know and layer uh, shifts so guys thank you for watching and if you do find a firmware file for this printer let me know and I'll just use the same process I know how to do it now with the Arduino uh, software to uh, uh, modify the the file and push the uh, firmware update uh, to the printer so thank you for watching and uh, see you next time goodbye guys